Assalamualaikum dan selamat datang ke Forum Awam Hak Kanak-Kanak di Malaysia, Anjuran Sisters in Islam. Nama saya ialah Nik Syazarina Bakti dan saya akan menjadi pengacara majlis pada hari ini. Sisters in Islam mengadakan forum ini sebagai platform untuk suara alternatif dalam isu anak tidak sah taraf. Kontroversi tercetus di Malaysia baru-baru ini apabila seorang anak tidak dapat dibinkan dengan nama bapanya kerana dianggap tidak sah taraf. Sebelum kami bermula, kami memohon kerjasama para hadirin untuk mengisi pra survey yang telah diberikan sebentar tadi. Terima kasih kerana telah mengisikan borang pra survey tersebut. Dengan ini saya menjemput Puan Sharina Sharif, moderator sesi ini bersama para panelis Datuk Ismail Yahya, Dr. Nur Rofia, Encik Said Azmi Al-Habshi dan juga Encik Munawir Abdul Aziz. Dipersilakan. Terima kasih Zarin, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum tuan-tuan dan puan-puan um, Selamat kembali ke part 2 forum kita hari ini Kenaan dengan uh, anak tak sah taraf uh, Antara stigma, hak dan agama Jadi tiga isu ni yang kita akan mengupasi bagi tengah hari ini um, Kalau uh, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan Tadi uh, ke forum uh, sebelah pagi dan kenal Dr. Nur Rufiah uh, Dia juga akan jadi panelis bagi tengah hari ini juga Encik Munawir, Datuk Ismail dan Encik Syed Azmi saya akan kenalkan satu persatu nanti um, uh, Isu yang kita uh, akan mengupasi uh, tengah hari ini memang isu yang sangat hangat uh, di, di uh, Malaysia Uh, hari ini uh, Tuan-tuan perempuan mungkin tahu uh, Bulan Julai dahulu uh, Mahkamah Rayuan Our Court of Appeal uh, Ada satu kes uh, uh, Dengan uh, Jabatan Pendaftaran Negara Di mana Court of Appeal telah uh, Memutuskan bahawa JPN mempunyai hak Untuk menamakan anak uh, Itu mengikut nama Uh, ayahnya mengikut nama bapaknya tapi lepas tu I think we saw a lot of debate from uh, different parts of society tokoh-tokoh agama uh, peguam-peguam judges etc yang uh, um, ada uh, dan dan you know uh, the, the the public in general yang mempunyai um, pandangan sendiri terhadap isu uh, isu anak tak sah taraf ini. Jadi hari ini kami menjemput pakar-pakar uh, kami dari bidang undang-undang, dari bidang agama uh, dan dan juga boleh um, uh, share with us some real experiences. Jadi saya nak uh, uh, memulakan panel ni uh, sama dengan Cik uh, Said Azmi. Um, Cik saya Azmi merupakan um, mempunyai kelulusan sarjana muda di dalam bidang farmasi UKM dan juga seorang aktivis sosial, uh, quite famous aktivis saya rasa yang prihatin dengan isu-isu genting di Malaysia seperti pendidikan, masalah sosioekonomi dan juga keganasan seksual kanak-kanak. Kerana ini beliau dikenali sebagai salah seorang NGI atau non-government individual di Malaysia sejak tahun 2016 Antara projek yang telah dijalankan oleh beliau ialah free market dan suspended meals Encik uh, Suai Azmi kini terlibat secara aktif dalam lebih 48 kumpulan uh, organisasi, organisasi yang juga memperjuangkan isu-isu yang berkaitan dengan hak-hak kemanusiaan dan beliau bercadang membuka NGO-nya sendiri pada uh, ujung tahun ni. Encik uh, Azmi akan cakap kenaan dengan uh, lived realities, hal-hal yang uh, memang pengalaman uh, keluarga dan kanak-kanak yang mengalami keadaan uh, anak tak sah taraf. Silakan Encik.
Assalamualaikum dan selamat tengah hari Good afternoon We, Before that, terima kasih Tuan Pemerusi, Puan Pemerusi Majlis Terima kasih Sisters in Islam uh, Rakan-rakan Taulan semua um, Before this, I need to explain that um, Saya akan bercakap hari ini On a basis of mewakili kawan saya Yang sepatutnya ada kat sini Hari ini, Puan Mimi She is also one of the founder For uh, rumah remaja hamil uh, Shelter home for pregnant girls eh? Jadi kita akan focus on that With that, um, I have done a lot of discussions with her and my role um, with the shelter home is actually to find a good exit plan for the girls. So up till yesterday, sorry. Oh, I see, sorry. So up until yesterday, uh, we have saved around 104 babies and to tell up to date, someone near bin atau binti Abdullah. Okay, so the reason why we didn't thought it was an issue because um, of the concept of this uh, transit home for girls yang kita buat boleh it's okay so uh, the reason uh, I, I need to explain to you this home called rumah kita based in Ampang and what is the concept and then you can actually understand why certain things that I'm saying today is not as hot as how I used to be on certain causes that I like to talk about um, because the reality sucks a bit uh, for this case um, rumah kita uh, ditubuhkan uh, to actually help as a transit home, shelter home for girls. Um, the thing is, why it's a bit different and why I agree to work on it is we, prov we let them to have their own handphones, we let them to actually have visitors, we applaud, uh, we want, their parents have to know or their next of kin have to know that they are coming to us um, so that there's consent because anything happen, ke kematian ke, death ke apa ke, we know who to call. And um, one of the factors that we like to see from this home is um, we, did not, we do not open this option for adoption in this house. Okay, uh, that's the, the other thing yang memang susah sikit but, but we do not want to get into the problem of baby trafficking. Uh, so we were saying that okay, never mind, uh, we only accept girls who actually want to take care of their own babies and at the same time during the course of them being with us uh, we call up their parents a lot of times so that they will accept their daughter and the grandchild. That was the plan because we don't believe that children should go into institution. The best place for the children is with the mother and the family. Um, lately, uh, now comes the story why I think Pond Vimi was asked to come for this forum, is lately ni, the cases of below 16 is tremendous. We even have waiting lists of girls below 16 coming. Up to yesterday, there's 16 girls waiting and they're all below 16. And as you've heard that I said that in our rumah kita punya concept is it's not up for adoption. It means that they agree and they take care. Half of them, even more half of them, are not already in school. This is why uh, I wanted to know with all our sex education planning, program keselamatan diri and everything like that, it's great because we believe school is the best institution for them to reach out. But masalah saya ialah, these girls don't go to school. That's why they can, oh yeah, yeah I'm going to take care of my baby. Because don't you think of schooling? No, because I haven't been in school for the past two, three years. So they got pregnant and all that. Okay, with us, um, the youngest is nine years old. Uh, now kita hantar ke Taman Sri Putri. And then apart from that, uh, the youngest with me is 12 years old. The one that I memang jaga sendiri. Uh, she got pregnant, 13 years old twins, 15 years old twins, 19 year old one. So that case was the one that worries me because she came back. Maknanya dia second pregnancy, third pregnancy in the same house. How does it feel like to know that you jaga diorang? And what is the exit plan strategy? Okay, so please understand this is the whole concept until the Bain Binti Abdullah was a problem and then we got caught in a very much turmoil. Because NRD tanya, uh, bila tu, uh, Bain Abdullah, Binti Abdullah, okay. We just okay because the girls dah takut, they don't want to go. And our exit strategy plan, uh, Vimi punya background is actually catering business and cooking. So she's good at that. So basically all of the girls pandai masa, all of the girls pandai buat business, we get a lot of gerai, we get a lot of catering orders. And the girls themselves try to improve because they know that tak boleh depend on men. Um, and these girls yang below 16 is a bit weird because they like to protect their boyfriend. They will protect their boyfriends. So basically, uh, they will lie, kata um, the, untuk maaf eh, doctor no, but most of them kata, oh, they're Indonesian, you know, so, so oh, nanti polis kata tak boleh cari, and that's it, case closed. So they they just buat macam tu. Now, on the Bain Binti Abdullah case, okay, now they understand that 
the problem with rumah kita ni lagi besar daripada the concept of the bin bin tea okay but um, we actually become more concerned because um, waktu nak buat pendaftaran uh, CG lahir and all that so most of the girls memang tak kisah but look at the implication this is where the NRD kadang-kadang marah kata macam itulah dia tak kisah bin siapa anak ni bin siapa dia tak kisah so that's why they can produce more babies so that's also one aspect perspective i'm not saying that we don't have to pick sides i mean uh, sri tadi cakap this is great everybody is in one voice but we shouldn't be in one voice if we want to make change we have to see where the differences between different opinion or different experience okay so this is one of the reason why orang kata kalau kita tak jaga the nasab ke kita tak jaga uh, the lineage of keluarga ke um, so lagi banyak benda-benda macam ni yang boleh dikeluarkan lagi banyak benda-benda yang haram ni boleh dikeluarkan dan dijalankan so um, they give us a lot of this problem now that is in the concept of uh, transit home for girls and the girls tak kisah, we do ask kalau dia anak besar besok dia tanya bapak dia siapa ke apa what's the problem hence we go to school Okay, so in real life scenario in school, there was this one school. Uh, it was pub. It, there was this one school. The father actually published it on Facebook. I tak share. Okay, anak-anak yang tak ada mak bapa beratu belakana, anak luar nikah beratu sini, yang lain beratu sini. It was on Facebook. It was on Facebook baru-baru ni. I know the case two days waktu it happened. And um, bila dia masuk Facebook, the problem with in school is. The Kementerian Pendidikan tak menjawab apa-apa soalan bila siapa-siapa tanya anything from Ministry of Education. You can never get any response from Ministry of Education. They manage to just keep quiet and just biar benda tu beredar macam tu je. They never want to feel that they are responsible of anything. And I'm sorry, I love teachers and this is not about bashing teachers. No. Okay? This is about... That's why bila kita ada kes bully tu, tak boleh call 15999 kan? Because that's not the line. So, dia kata go to school. But when you go to school, dia kata you have to go to top. So, tak sampai ke top, nothing. So, in school, there are some difficulties on rumah-rumah anak yatim that I called up about nine of it yang I work with. Yes, they admit that um, the teacher would ridicule them and all that. But let's not go for that. Because to me, those are just stories. It's like porn based. But what happens to the child? The child punya aspect. When we feel, when we see the child, when I saw a few of the children, they said, "Tahu tak kenapa jumpa abang Said? You know why you are here to see me?" And then when they tahu kita tak demak, kita tak tahu bapa kita siapa. Jadi abang nak tanya apa? It was like that. I know, you know, like dah semua orang kata kita nak luar nikah, nak haram. And I told him this. My name is Said Azmi Al Habshi. And when I had to make a passport few years back, even the immigration officer cakap, "Ni tak ada nama Ben ya, tak ada bapa." It was just like that. Okay, you don't you have your father's name, so you are not Lodi Kaka. It was just like that. And I totally understand because I get that in school. So when I was telling these boys and these girls, these girls kata, oh, macam tu lah rasa dia. Macam tu. Jadi kalau, apa tu, for sekolah rendah, it's like that. For sekolah menengah, what happened to sekolah menengah when these kids kena macam tu? Now the bin, I think the the stigma tu was like, All the girls tahu, um, all these children tahu waktu sekolah menengah ni, they know that ada 99 nama uh, yang baik-baik yang dia boleh pilih. So sometimes they don't understand tu lah nama Abdullah ni yang macam sial sikit. It's very sad. You know, and this is in sekolah menengah. It's very sad and cikgu-cikgu dia pun, um, and we try to educate the teachers. We try to educate the teachers because, um, They think that there's no point. This is how I know your sekolah menengah after 15 tu tak wajib. You know, that's how I know. That, oh tak wajib pergi sekolah menengah. Sebab kan cara macam tu. So, this is why I think banyak sangat isu uh, on this akan buatkan these children jadi lain macam. I don't want to go to the basis of faktor-faktor. I have all this list of uh, faktor-faktor kalau anak lu nikah bila dia menjadi student besok, apa jadi kat dia. I mean, to me, it sounds like porn because you don't live like how they live in so to me when um when i know this and people love masyarakat love to label this oh saya ni istimewa tau kanak-kanak istimewa why dia nak luar nikah and i was thinking oh i thought you went to say that she's great in maths she's good in science that's how i see it when you say kanak-kanak istimewa you were like yes you know but that's what's happened um before coming to this um i actually spoke to um Uh, Mufti Wilayah and Datuk Mahzah 
um, because I just wanted to know like okay apa sangat lah you know why is it so big you know kenapa kita nampak macam dua mufti ni cakap dua benda berbeza bunyi macam Islam ni berpecah and I said I'm very much uncomfortable and I don't know how to deal with this uh, mufti wilayah was saying uh, and, and this one I can quote because he actually texted it back to me uh, he said that these children are really special yang, yang, cah, yang tak baiknya is the masyarakat yang mencemoh so even though he thinks that uh, patutnya bin binti Abdullah tu, uh, dia kekalkan cara yang mana I tak, tak setuju and I felt very sad I kata you tahu tak tak tu how sad it feels for these children in school bila dia orang kena ostracized bila dia kena kutuk kena cemoh and that tu cakap I straight forward itu yang salah it's not about the, these children it's about the masyarakat yang cemoh so why are you focusing on this name of these children you nak highlight when you don't want to betulkan the masyarakat yang mencemoh dia orang so I said because it's easier <laughs> It's easier if you cover and you shelter these children and they don't have to defend themselves and they don't have to explain. They say, it is easy, probably. Tapi bila nak kahwin besok, takut susah. Okay, standard. And I can take it like, oh, okay. I don't really understand, but okay, fine. And then uh, Datuk Mazah kata, boleh. Um, kata macam, tak apa, boleh. Kata. And I, I just asked like, why is it so okay, boleh? Until somebody asked him a question. Tapi bila nak kahwin besok, does, will the girl know? Will the girl know that sebenarnya dia anak luar nikah? Let's say you dah tukar nama and then bila dia nak kahwin besok, will you, will she know? Dia kata, ah dia tahu. Tapi lain lah sekali sebab orang dewasa boleh terima. It's not true as well. It's not true. It's still with a bang. It's still surprise. So, so benda-benda macam tu, uh, dia tetap kata yang salah is the masyarakat. It's not these girls. This is what we tell all our girls. Our girls because they are taking care of their babies. So they will get married one day. So, apa tu, anak dia akan tahu bin lain, tapi dia tak kisah sebab bapak dia orang lain. So, kira macam ambil anak angkat. You see how much we try to whitewash this because we're trying to just make it seems okay. Macam anak angkat, so, pasal bapak lain? Oh, ni bapak lain, macam tu. You know? So, now these girls, when I pre- when we prepare the exit plan from rumah kita nanti, uh, the girls will know that they will tell the truth that bapak you orang lain. That's why you kena check wali hakim. It will happen like that. Walaupun you kahwin bapak dia. It sounded great. But the issue we're having right now is who are we centralized this on, this issue? We centralize on the children. So sebenarnya, what we are doing today is to talk about protection of children from a child's perspective. So from a child's perspective is that kalau kita dapat uh, make sure that nama tu dapat and then of course dia tak kena kutuk, tak kena cemuh and all things like that, I, I totally agree with this. But unfortunately, I'm very conventional when it comes to things. <laughs> And so that bila dia nak kahwin besok and things like that and all these other hukum yang I think our other panelists will explain that's the part that I'm trying to see how um, how we can narrate it so that these mothers, um, these girls or even orang lain yang tak datang uh, getting proper guidance how can they narrate it bila anak-anak tu besar besok Talking about on teachers, um, I haven't done anything yet because I wrote letters to go into school to talk about anak tak sataraf ke ni semua ni and it's worse kalau sekolah tu panggil tu anak haram These words right, bila dia panggil oh tu anak haram so tak takpelah Syed takpe you know and a lot of schools actually understand and they say that um, kita tak cakap lah kat siapa-siapa they, they, they don't really see it but then again ni manusia lah and I think Malaysia they love to generalize they like to make labels towards these girls and especially the ones yang hantar kat rumah-rumah anak yatim uh, itu kena double wham lah because of things like that um, another factor that Puan Bimi kata tolong cakap kat semua orang because the thing is it's not about it's about um, yeah okay eh sorry eh because I want her to speak because I want to sit like where you guys are sitting so I can ask her more questions <laughs> but um, so I'm giving all this input so now we um, for Rumah Rumah Jamil you have to understand the support system for this is already bad having this home transit home for girls is already a bad taboo is already being um, labeled kan so kita tak nak ada masalah dengan any government agency so kalau dia kata bin atau binti Abdullah kita orang setuju saja if you think that's the best for the child I don't think so and we are trying to fight for that so mana-mana yang kita rasa dapat kita dapat ada satu case dia dapat tukar nama because of the recent thing dia dapat tukar nama kena panggil tukar balik pun ada juga you know and because this girl kata tak boleh nak buat apa we follow so if you think that because we are not we are thinking about safety of these girls okay you faham no eh? we are thinking about safety of these girls but the child tu memang kena dolak talik macam tu is it the best in our country not at all um so dari segi um 
we also want to we also have a problem juga with anak tak sataraf macam ni bila dia nak minta bantuan macam zakat <laughs> minta nak bantuan um macam baitul mal and all that we find out that because of this status anak tu tak ada banyak sangat privilege dia even though i think it's um to me um banyak orang banyak ustaz kata salah tu salah <laughs> kata salah ke tak salah ke anak-anak ai this baby tak dapat bantuan So apa tu and this is a problem. I'm sorry that I sounded scattered brain all over the place. I'm actually really much hoping to be the last to speak then I know which context that you guys are interested to hear. Um but on my part I want to to, to know that most transit home for girls our aim is to make sure they are okay, the mothers, the bayu mum. Uh, we want to make sure that they actually take um deliver safely the child is put in safe place kalau rumah rumah remaja hamil tu that transit home they actually put up for adoption we want to make sure that they put it up for adoption properly um that's our aim okay um on bin or binti abdullah ni the thing is kadang-kadang for our home kita pun tak berani nak cakap banyak sangat because we don't know whether is it hukum is it not is it syariah is it fiqh we don't know so we we ikut saja apa nrd cakap because it's already enough ridicule bila nak pergi hospital oh dia ni terus the file jadi warna merah the file there's a tag kalau dia tak ada bapa kalau tak ada suami i mean sorry kalau tak ada suami it's a different tag so we got all that stigmatized already since day one they come and join us until dia nak keluar they just want to leave and till budak tu dapat pergi sekolah we just want to make sure ada surat beranak boleh masuk sekolah So I think to us that's our protection towards our children and of course to treat them so that they become resilient as they grow up is something that we haven't seen because it's only for few years baru so kita tak nampak lagi anak-anak ni pergi sekolah so we tak tahu apa dia kalau tarika is still okay tarika so far um, nobody ever complain and tarika trying to differentiate budak-budak ke apa so probably permata tu adalah kebaikannya but apa tu um, <laughs> so but other than <laughs> But other than that, um, apa other than that, uh, these are the kind of social stigma we have. Kita orang tak ada masa nak layan sangat on on issues about rights couple sangat with, when it comes to these girls because we just want to make sure that they can stand on their own, berdikari as they go out. We take care until six months old. The baby is six months old, then we let them go. So, kalau dia orang awal-awal lagi mak bapak dah ambil the parents wants to take them and take care of their house ke apa macam tu then they can go but kalau tak dia orang dah tak boleh pergi mana-mana some parents tak nak ambil balik we the failure rate is around 20 less than 10% now uh, so we find them job we create skills they stay with us so we have a transit home for pregnant girls and we have a confinement home Uh, so from there you want to check kerja area Ampang and we take care of the babies and that was it i'm so sorry if this is inadequate this is like the biggest i feel uh, coming and talk to all of you um hopefully um you can i can clarify with a question and answers later with that thank you so much thank you said very interesting jadi yang yang kita nak lihat ni isu-isu berkenaan kemaslahatan uh, kanak-kanak and how religion bagaimana undang-undang Islam dan hukum-hukum Islam uh, membuat aplikasi tepat, uh, terhadap ya, isu-isu itu ya, yang 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 jadi um, uh, debate ialah sebab kadang-kadang um, opinion tu bercanggah berlainan um, even in Malaysia berlainan uh, dulu in in the 1980s di Malaysia walaupun anak tak sah taraf uh, a man is supposed to at least provide nafkah now that responsibility is is removed uh, jadi even laws change uh, through the years and now now the the matter has come in a sense to the to the to the front of the of the whole debate 